Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on discrete random variables. Now in this tutorial what I want to show you is if, if we've got a discrete random variable x and we were to add or subtract a constant from that random variable then e of x plus or minus that constant, let's call it a say, is equal to e of x plus or minus that constant. I'm also going to show you another idea where if we multiply a random variable x with a constant a, we get ax, then e of ax turns out to be equal to that constant a times e of x. And by using these formulae it would save us an awful lot of calculations. Anyway, let's just show you how these work, okay, how they're derived and how they can help us take a shortcut. We'll just remove them first of all. Now, let's suppose we take our spinner that you should be fairly familiar with in previous tutorials. If you haven't seen these, do make sure you go back. But we have our spinner here with the scores 1, 2 and 3 on and we've got a probability distribution table here for the discrete random variable x which is the score on the wheel and we've got our probabilities listed underneath the scores and do you remember we worked out e of x the expected mean by doing the observed value times the probability plus the next observed value times probability and then finally 3 times the 5 eighths doing the sum of those and that gives us e of x the expected mean. Now what we're going to do now is take these scores and we're going to add a constant to them. Let's say we take our spinner okay, and we are going to add say 3 to every score that you see. So the 3 becomes a 6, 3 add 3 is 6, the 1 becomes a 4 now, 3 and th round here, 3, 3 and 3 all become 6's, the 1 becomes a 4, the 3 here becomes a 6 and the 2 if we add 3 to it becomes a 5. So we've got a new spinner with new scores on it. Okay, what about a table now, a probability distribution table for these? Well we add 3 to all our observed scores so our table is going to have observed values of x plus 3 and we're going to be working out the probability that our random variable x plus 3 equals any of those observed values x plus 3 and if we list those observed values out they're going to be 4, 5 and 6 but instead of writing 4 I'm going to write 1 the original score plus 3 and instead of the 5 I'm going to write 2 plus 3 and instead of the 6 3 plus 3. Now what about the probabilities of each of these scores? Well they don't change, they don't change from the values you got up here. Getting a 1 was 2 out of 8. Now the probability of getting a 4 is still going to be 2 out of 8. And the same is going to apply with getting a 5, the 2 add 3, it's going to be 1 8. And getting a 6 is the same as we have for a 3, 5 8. Now in the usual way we can work out what e of x plus 3 is going to be. Because remember when you want to work out an expected value all you've got to do is multiply the observed value with the probabilities and then total them, sum them up. So we would have 1 plus 3 multiplied by 2 eighths. We'd add that to 2 plus 3 times 1 eighth. And finally the 3 plus 3 is going to be multiplied by the 5 eighths. Now look what we can do. If we expand the bracket, let's just take the first number in each bracket and multiply it by the probability. So we've got 1 times 2 eighths and then plus this 2 times the 1 eighth 
and then this 3 times that 5 eighths. Now, if we multiply each of these probabilities with the 3, do you notice because we've got 3 in each one, we might as well just pull 3 out as a common factor and do 3 times the 2 eighths plus the 3 times the 1 eighth and finally 3 times the 5 eighths. Now you see this calculation here for the first three terms. We did that earlier over here. It was e of x. So this is now e of x. And what about this bit down here? Well we've got 3 multiplied by the sum of 2 eighths, 1 eighth and 5 eighths. Well that comes to 8 eighths, one whole one. So you've got 3 times 1 which is just the 3. So what we've got here is a special result of the general result. This general result is that if we have a random variable x and we add a constant to it, then e of x plus a turns out to be equal to e of x and then plus the constant a. That constant being 3 here. e of x plus 3 equals e of x, then add 3. And the same is true when you subtract a constant. I'll leave it to you to do an example and you can check it out. And how handy would this be? Well it would save us doing all this calculation if we just knew this result. So in this case all we've got to do is take e of x which was 19 over 8 and then add the 3. And if you work that out, 19 eighths plus 3 gives you 43 eighths. So that's the expected score when you add 3 to it. Now what happens if we were to multiply all the scores, say on the wheel, by a number? Let's say we multiplied all these scores by 3. What would we get? Well here's our spinner. Now if we multiplied the 3 by 3, we're going to get 9. 1 times 3 is 3. We've got 9 down here for all of these ones. 1 times 3 is 3, another 9 here, and here two 3's are going to be 6. So, spinner with new scores on. Now, observed values are going to be 3 times what they were before, 3x. And we need to work out the probability here that our random variable 3x equals the observed values, little 3x. So what are our observed values? Well we can see they are 3, 6 and 9. But I'm going to write the 3 as the observed value, 1 times 3, and then the 6 as 2 times 3, and the 9 as 3 times 3. And the probabilities of these observations are going to be exactly the same again as what we had up here. 2 eighths, 1 eighth, and finally 5 eighths. So when it comes to working out what we would expect that score to be when we multiply it by 3, in other words 3x, e of 3x, what do we get? Well we get 1 times 3 multiplied by its probability, 2 eighths. And then we need to add that to 2 times 3 times the probability of 1 eighth. And finally 3 times 3 multiplied by the probability of 5 eighths. Now 3 occurs in each of those terms so it's a common factor and we could pull it out. So let's just put it outside the front of a square bracket. And inside, for this term, we'd have 1 times 2 eighths. 1 times the 2 eighths. And for the second term here, we'd have 3 times the 2 times 1 eighth. So just 2 times 1 eighth goes there. And finally, 3 times 5 eighths. And again, you might have noticed that this calculation inside the square brackets is e of x again. So we can say that this is 3 times e of x. 
So we have a new rule that multiplying by 3 with that random variable, doing e of 3x becomes 3e of x. We just take that constant out in front of e of x. So in general, what we find is that if we multiply a random variable x by a constant a, e of ax turns out to be a e of x. So again, we don't have to do any of this working if we can learn this rule. So in this case, all we need to do is just simply times e of x, which was 19 over 8, by 3. And if you do that, what you get is 57 over 8. So I hope that's given you some idea of how these rules are derived, what they mean, and how we can use them as shortcuts rather than having to do these calculations midstream. Alright? Well, thanks for listening and I hope that's of been some use to you.